Fleet Week in San Francisco means that every buoyant vessel is out there floating around on the bay. There's absolutely no wind. Let's go sailing. I wanted to go out and bob around as well. This would be my first time maneuvering a boat under sail completely alone since, well, maybe ever. There's usually always someone around taking the tiller or wheel. But today was calm enough for the supboard yogis, so I hopefully wouldn't have any problems. It was all pretty lax, but I immediately came to appreciate the ability to nicely heave to a boat without self-steering while hoisting a mainsail. Not that it mattered if the boat was heaved to or not. There wasn't much steerage in this little windless, eddy-filled corner. I needed to get over to Raccoon Strait, where the sailing party seemed to be happening. Why are all these guys' sails not flopping around like mine? Why do they got all the wind and I don't? I wanted light winds for being alone on the boat for the first time, and I really got light wind. It's really, really, really light. I had a small trail of bubbles, though. I was moving just a bit. Meanwhile, the air show was starting. But I had to slowly make my way back already, before the tide would become too low to pick up the anchor in the shallows. As exciting as this slow motion race was, it would have to come to an end. I returned to my kayak mooring successfully without a hitch and prepared to sail the next day aboard the Swan. The owner of the rigging shop has this wonderful 50-footer that feels like stroking your hand over silk to steer. So I was happy to take the helm for our trip across the slot to dodge a thousand other boats, all standing in line to have the fairy dust of jet fuel sprinkle down on us. The show is a wonderful display of American taxpayer dollars being burned overhead as the crowds look up in awe and have the fumes surround them. Honestly, it is a lot of fun, and the experience of being out on the bay in a nice breeze is unbeatable. The only thing that could kill that good spirit is a note from the harbor master. The push to get rid of anchor outs is becoming more aggressive every day. Although some people out here have problems, what kind of humans don't have flaws and failings? I didn't appreciate the note threatening to tow away and destroy the roof over my head. This is why I choose the liveaboard lifestyle. I can take my home and enjoy an evening sail, all while boiling up a pot of tea. It's not always easy, and that's why sometimes those out on the water need a helping hand, and not a disdainful dismissal. I'm sure if I got my phone out, I could tell us that we're going one, less than a knot. One lovely Saturday night and Sunday, the wind blew through the valleys and all through the bay, making everything nice and wavy and sloppy. Several boats broke loose from their anchors and crashed up helplessly against the concrete wall of Oyster Point Marina. Careful then! Take it easy! Gene, zooming around in his aluminum dinghy, contemplated dragging the poor vessels off the wall, or throwing some fenders in between them and the wall. However, the water was just too rough to undertake the salvage operation.
that's nice. Fields are. Yeah. This happy dude was out enjoying the breeze in his tiny sailing dinghy, just on the protected side of the wall, all while the smashing and crashing was taking place just meters away. I guess it's pretty great that at least somebody was having a good day today. Back in Sausalito, the anchorage was rocking as well. The length of the fetch was shorter here, but the boats were dancing around in their slips and at anchor. I didn't dare to paddle out to the boat in my kayak until things really quieted down. After the wind, there was a lot of salt to wipe off. The wind also brought the beginning of a three or four day power outage. There was absolutely no electricity in Sausalito and in many communities north of San Francisco. The power was shut down on purpose to mitigate the occurrence of wildfires fueled by the wind. There were evacuations and people wearing masks for smoke settling in on the bay. People were huddled around power outlets and Wi-Fi hubs and stores like Target that had generators going. I had power to charge my phone and computer here on the boat, though. After the power came back on, it was finally time to get my rigging made. The rigging shop has a wall of shame, ridiculously broken parts. Any piece of our current boat's standing rigging would fit in just fine here. So it was finally time to carefully select from the inventory of new swedge end fittings, turnbuckles and toggles to make things right again. We quadruple checked our overall length measurements from pinholes on the mast to pinholes on the chain plate and deck so that all the new pieces of wire would fit. We would be replacing the headstay and the backstay with 3 8 inch wire and some of the shrouds that could be upsized with compact strand wire, which basically means more strength without having to make the wire diameter larger. <laughs> With all the lengths ready to go, it was time to cut and assemble. All right, here comes your head stay. 54, nine and a half. What are we gonna do about this? Ah, that's what you do about it. Okay. So we're cutting the head stay to length, and we're gonna switch on the bottom. Things get really serious when the swedging begins. Go no go Gage. The dies join the end fittings to the wire seamlessly and get checked with the gauge. It's made in Germany, it's a good machine. We never have any problems with it between this and the and the parts that we use, which are the best parts for the cheapest price. It's a good value. If you've watched some of our older videos, you'll recognize that we rigged Rosa here and trust Tom's advice on all matters rigging. And what they actually do to make compact strand, they take a bigger wire and run it through a compressing machine. So a bunch of rollers that just squish it together. So it takes all the air out of it. This is the one for the compact strand. It's just a little bit longer. And these are more holding power. The compact strand is 20% stronger. So that's 20% more. Longer. The compact strand requires a little more care before swedging. The ends get cleaned beforehand. Wooey! Love the smell of acetone in the morning. Yep. And that's mm -hmm. diamond dust. It's industrial diamonds crushed up in a little. This rigging is getting out of control. <laughs> now putting diamonds into it. That's right. <laughs> so after the primer, we put on some Loctite. This Loctite is just a special Loctite for adhering the diamond dust to the wire. Come on, Tom. You got this. I don't know the angle that these make to the mast wall. Yeah. So I'm thinking that we're just going to bend all these 
we're going to take this angle out. Our new standing rigging was really taking shape. Now it was time to decide how to transport it all the way down to the boat, 3,200 miles away, because it was really quite heavy. The long walk. 